Then Felicia Angel, the voice of Mona. What up, Felicia? Hey, hey. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. How's it going? What up, dude? Hey. Oh, my God. I can see the chat. And uh, Marty spelled my name correctly, so he's my favorite person. Or, or they. <laughs> yes. Favorite. Yeah, surprise Mona stream, y'all. We're <laughs> doing it. I, I literally came in here because I saw that Felicia was in here, and I was like, oh, my God, I have to get in because, <laughs> like, Mona's now, like, my main. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We got yeah. a Mona, finally, and she is our main, too. And God. it is it's so good. I keep startling. I And anytime I'm not paying attention, my husband is playing, too. Um, and, like, she goes idle. I scare myself. It's always the, like... Divination, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, your your character. First of all, I just gotta say, I mean, in terms of voices in the game, I love everybody. They're all my babies. Mm -hmm. But that being said, the transatlantic take you took with oh. Mona is just one of my favorite things ever. It's really, man. I for freaking her. love it, dude. Thank really you so fitting. It's, I love to do it. It's so much fun and just like getting to bring it up and being like maybe like you just kind of slide it across the table to someone's like i know this isn't what we usually think but please right <laughs> uh no it's just so good and like what i love about it is you know i remember when we first came in and we started doing the uh, the auditions and stuff like that and we were kind of trying to figure out and hone in where mona was and stuff i don't know how we landed on that i don't know if you just did it or what happened but i remember thinking to myself i was like god it's got a little audrey hepburn-esque to it and mm -hmm. uh and it was seriously it was some of my favorite i mean it's still to this day one of my favorite uh voices in this game i freaking love it so <laughs> it's such a cool thing too because it's it's one of those voices that she gets away with saying some pretty snarky stuff but the the affect softens it so that we can yeah. still kind of like her it's it's almost like a southern charm thing but yeah <laughs> yeah it is it's got it's weird it's got the, it's got the transatlantic aspect to it but like yourself you're from the south you got a southern charm right so i think that definitely plays into it as well there's it's just something beautiful mm -hmm. I love it. for sure i love it man and uh and the fans love mona i mean first of all you've got one of the best support alts in the game uh which is i love that you, that graham calls it the was it the i win button when you yes you, you just he'll he'll hit it and go look at that we win i win we did it that's amazing yeah no her her ultimate's amazing i've got her myself but she's only a c4 i'm still missing two monas wait hold on you have a c4 mona yeah what yeah wait don't you have a c6 mona no i have c0 i only had oh. one mona Oh, it took no. so long for me to get that Mona, and then of course when I went for Ganyu, I literally only got Ganyu four times in a row for my golds. The the problem is it's tough, man. I mean, getting Mona, it's like there's no guarantee on that, man. No, there isn't. There's no there's no Mona. I want a Mona banner so that way I can't. I will gladly spend the money to see six Mona. But <laughs> people are laughing. People are laughing at me for saying she's only C four. I know. All right, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm mad. Because I, I didn't know. I, I I'm used Mona. to C six and stuff, man. <laughs> it took it feels me like so a long to get my Mona. Not to mention, I don't know, Felicia, if you heard of this, but yesterday I started the Chi Chi for Chi Chi fund where people like were donating to my channel, but to get Christy Kate Chi Chi finally. We Aww. got six hundred dollars in like an hour and she still didn't get a chi chi but Dude, she got two monas chi -chi so she got yeah. two monas getting chi chi's tough man anybody that's not on a banner is really tough to get i mean you just get them when you get them you know what i mean yeah mona i lucked out uh in the sense that i would just get randomly monas as i would uh pull for c6 and on stuff but so uh but mona d luke's been a little tough i think it might see four or five with d luke i can't remember i i got up there with d luke eventually but uh yeah, let's see it was, uh, who it was here is a mona battle for us too to get mona and then we uh we did the ganyu bad banner uh once yesterday did you get ganyu and got ganyu did you really i nice. did yeah i was uh i was actually texting with jim like okay we're gonna try it and see what we get oh we got her okay we have it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wish us luck oh, oh never mind we got yeah. it we, we did it yeah. yay <laughs> 
Dude, Ganyu wrecks this thing, whatever this is, dude. This little eye thing in the sky, it's just frozen the whole time. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah, no, Ganyu's pretty dope. Um, so, all right, tell us, tell us, tell us. You've been playing now, okay? Uh, at first, I wasn't sure if you were playing, but you're playing, and you're playing on what, PlayStation? Yes, yes, we're on PS4, maybe. PS4, all right. And uh, what exactly, uh, I want to know what your favorite aspect of the game is so far. I mean, you voiced it, obviously, but like having played it, when you're voicing things, you don't necessarily know exactly how it's going to look or play out. Mm -hmm. um, now that you've gotten a little game time in, what do you think? How do you feel about the game? What's your favorite Gosh, I, I really like it. I have a hard time with um, really big open world things just because I get distracted. I like a little more linear, but this has been really fun to explore um i really like cooking that's Ooh. that's what i do a lot in the game <laughs> i'm just like crafting <laughs> and cooking that's awesome but um just the world itself is so detailed and so broad uh that exploring is really fun um and the puzzles i oh. big puzzle fan that's where i come in um I had to try to talk Graham out of. He kept trying to scale the mountain and freeze to death. He's just like freezing to death, and I'm like, I don't think this is how this goes. I think it's a puzzle. I think you just gotta follow the. Um, so that's what I'm useful for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Figuring out how how we do not die, <laughs> making sure that's we're amazing. like uh, we're proficient in all of our our recipes and figuring out how to to puzzle well that's important. how to puzzle mm -hmm. that's, that's really awesome. important <laughs> i mean have you been liking the dragon spine area yeah um we were wrapped up there i think um wait you've done 100 percent of dragon spine no no i probably not we're just kind of playing through story right now so and we're we're on and off so mm -hmm. damn me. Um, no, I won't. We oh, we just we just wrapped up Mondstadt is what we did, and we're oh wait oh so you're going to Lyra now? <laughs> yes, we are going to Lyra. <laughs> I love every actor that does it. Just always kind of does it fast and hopes that nobody notices it's, how they say it's, it. It's it's kind of like speed it uh, just spray and pray. Mm -hmm. Just spray out the words and pray that it worked. It's, it's go confidently in the direction of your dreams. You just, <laughs> just, just keep Ray moving, and, and it'll work, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty great. And and tell me, uh, what what is the four team that you? What's the four man team that you usually run with, you and Graham? Let's see. We we did some changing up today. So right now we've got Mona, Ganyu, uh, Ningguang, and Kachi as our Ooh. main party. Wait, Mona, Mona, Ganyu, Ningguang, and Kachi. So you have four or three of the four are five stars that you've got. That's pretty damn good, dude. Yeah, man. I, I don't want to say that we put some money into this. Hey, 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 man. <laughs> Hey, look, it's a tax write-off. You can say it. It's all good. Oh, it's true. It's true. This is all... It all it's all recent. It's a 100% tax write-off, dude. You can bet your ass. I've whaled the hell out of this game. You can bet your ass I'm writing this shit off. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to put whaling as the line item for my account. There you go. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, that's funny. You get, you get, you get like, fined because you don't have a fishery oh. license. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we now we have to do a, sh a sea shanty parody about oh, yes. whaling for characters. Oh, let's do it. I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. We can write a pirate song, you know? Mm -hmm. Dude, those the, the, the sea shanties are kind of a thing right now, and my bird is obsessed. Wait, what do you mean a thing right now? Like, on, for, on, on TikTok, TikToks. and like everybody's on singing the TikTok? Sea, sea shanties. Even Erica Harlicker sang one. Get out of here. I'm not even kidding. It's like a thing. People are like all about sea shanties right now. It's a oh, thing. Oh, damn. Well, I love sea shanties. Well, then yes. you're in luck. They're comeback, they're, dude. Yeah, they're getting a comeback. They're all singing the Wellerman right now. I don't I know what that means. I need us to pivot. We got to turn them on to the old Polina. Mm, That's the... There we go. That? That's the jam. That one. The old, the old P. Actually, yeah. um, I did just get a good question, at least just in general. Uh, there are yeah. sometimes different types of voice acting classes. Um, uh, there's ones that kind of... Sometimes they go off of, like, just 
character or animation, which generally kind of covers video games and original animation. And then there are ones for dubbing. There are ones that specifically go over um, video games, which then they rely, like they also go into like um, uh, doing like battle cries and stuff like that. Um, so yes, there are different uh, acting classes out there that cover different stuff. Sorry, I just yeah. had to get that. No, there, there are, there are. And there's also different levels. Like there's yes. acting classes that are like your demo and it's all about putting together a vocal demo. And then there's acting class, or there's a class out there for like, you know, 101. And there's acting classes for like more veteran techniques. And you know, there's just lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I am just a huge proponent of continued education. Oh, hell yeah. I, I took, you I took have two to. classes this week. Like <laughs> just constantly, um, trends evolve and well in the style evolve. of acting evolves yeah. you evolve as a person because i've been an actor since i was eight years old i definitely don't act the same way i do like there's no way but even like me compared to like five years ago it's a completely different actor mm -hmm. and and but um, uh but yeah um but yeah, Continue, like, like Felicia, uh, um, I mean, I, I've always said, like, it doesn't matter if you're wor like working, you still have to take voice acting classes, especially because as an actor, there's going to be times where you're not booking as much as other times. And at that mm -hmm. point, I think it's like even more important to take an acting class because it's like, okay, clearly I've gotten out of the loop or practice or whatever, or I've gotten comfortable in my acting and I, I need to go back to a class to kind of freshen up or, or remember mm. to take risks when auditioning so that I don't yes. sound like everybody else. So I don't know if that's the same for you or not, but that's the way it is for me at least. Yeah, absolutely. And I learn a lot from observation mm. and um, I started in theater and so same year. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Yay. I love I love that. We're at the Yay. theater. Um, <laughs> yeah, I want to get your thoughts on the state of theater now during the pandemic, but we'll get there. Anyway. Oh continue. my gosh. Um, but so coming from a place where so much of the way that I learned was um through that sort of communal creative space. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you know, sort of transitioning into something where you're isolated a lot of the time. You're performing just your part of a scene mm -hmm. um it really helps to get around that creative energy and even if it's digital sometimes i'll be thinking that like i i don't know what adjustment it is i need to make and then i'll hear somebody do something that's so mm -hmm. authentically them and yeah. you just get inspired and it's like oh i need to i need to shake it off i need to to shake something up i need to take the risk i need mm -hmm. to be vulnerable well and um, also like when you you know we're we're all alone in a booth even even when the pandemic is not a thing we're usually alone in the booth and like yeah, since you came from theater you understand that like you get an energy from the audience that also helps your performance and it and it's like a give and take of energy from both the audience and the actors on stage and you don't really get that when you're in a booth alone <laughs> <laughs> so you have to kind of create that energy yourself and that, that can be really hard to do and so yeah i feel like sometimes i just get comfortable and then yeah like but being in a class with other people you get that energy again and then you remind yourself oh right that's how it's supposed to feel <laughs> yeah no I, I mean honestly that 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 playing off of people is such a big part of obviously all that stuff and that's in, in part what the what i'm supposed to try to do with you guys although i don't try to like you know juice it up the way you guys do performance wise because i'm not an actor but mm -hmm. um but i try you to give you something best. to play off of you do your best yeah you know, and that's I try more to than you. like a lot of other directors some directors don't even do that yeah it's so helpful mm -hmm. it's so helpful because i've honestly just been like you know ev everybody's got their own style and sometimes needs must mm -hmm. but i've been in especially game sessions where you just get like an excel page and they're like yes read these mm-hmm and you just I'm like, okay, I'm going to make some bold choices and you can inform me after. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite's always like, well, that was a choice. And I'm like, you didn't really give me much. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. what did you expect? <laughs> yeah, no, a lot of people actually have this uh, in chat. They're saying, you know, a lot of people think, and I, obviously, I mean, it makes sense, but a lot of people assume that the voice actors are face-to-face -face when they record on stuff. Oh. And... To some extent, that's true. I mean, if you're recording prelay animation, yes. generally speaking, hey, Orange Bank, thank you. Another gift or, sub to subject. Wow. Oh, you're yeah, nice. that's nice. If you're, if you're going face to face, I mean, sorry, if you're doing prelay animation, 90% of the time, uh, you'll have the entire cast pre COVID mm -hmm. face to face in a booth somewhere. And they're all mic'd up on different tracks and stuff. 
but pre-lay animation is pretty much the only time that you do it. If you're working off of dubs, whether it's dubbed animation or live action dubs, it's usually individuals uh, one at a time. And almost always with video games, unless it's a bigger, like kind of triple A scenario where you're on like a mocap, you know, stage mm -hmm. and there's multiple people mic'd up and multiple people acting things out. That's the only other time that you really see that uh, kind yeah. of face-to-face -face stuff. Everything else is up to me to remember how somebody delivered a thing and if the thing that I'm receiving back from this other actor is going to mesh or mesh well with that with that stuff. So. Mm -hmm. That's why you are so vitally important. Mm. Vitally important. No, I, I'm just I just kind of all I do is tell you guys cool little stories and then you guys just make it cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know how has the COVID impact impacted the, uh, the 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 industry? And I, we've done surprisingly, we've adapted surprisingly well, I'd say, because a lot of actors already had home setups. Those who didn't have found ways to make home setups work. It's usually, you know, there are expensive ways to do home setups, and there are ways that you can kind of, you know, make it work. And I think a lot of people were able to kind of make it work and and choose some of the less expensive routes because especially in a pandemic it's like the last thing you're you know sure of is finances you know what i mean um so it's harder to justify some some expenses and stuff but um we've done all right we've done all right in terms of an industry uh, a lot of the work we can do can be done remotely uh, and over skype and zoom and stuff with people but thankfully it's been the tireless efforts of sound studios and production studios to kind of get that stuff figured out uh, myself and the actors just show up and go like cool let's go <laughs> um we actually already had albedo's va on our stream uh this last monday and that will also be on my youtube soon so um but yeah that what that was quite down we had a really nice interview with him on monday and it was really fun yeah, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yo, hello from Australia. So, um, um, Felicia, I, I got a question because, you know, like, I, I, I'm i here in L.A. and you're actually out in Texas. I am not. No. You're not LA. anymore? I thought you were. Mm -mm, I moved well, shoot. Uh, permanently. We, it's a long story. Okay, buckle okay. up, everybody. Uh, buckle up. But uh, I've been coming back and forth to L.A. for a few years for mm -hmm. work. Well, and, and I knew you um, did that, but, like, I thought I thought you hadn't permanently moved yet. I'm, I'm pleasantly mm -hmm. surprised. Yeah, so, um, la, the, blah, 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 time, okay, <laughs> the fall of 2019, my husband, who is a registered nurse, uh, mm -hmm. got an opportunity to come out on a temporary, um, travel nurse contact, uh, contract out at UCLA, mm. um, so he came out, uh, in September, I came out, um, around Thanksgiving, I had some stuff to wrap up, and it was just kind of the, you know, I had some friends here, so it was all, like, meeting people I and just kind of getting the lay of the like land, seeing mean. if it was a place that we would feel at home. Right. And we really liked it out here. And so uh, we found a place in Burbank in uh, the first week of April of 2020. Yeah, oh, wow. right before COVID. <laughs> Um, we seriously, it was the week before the initial lockdown that we, uh, got all our, our, we drove all our stuff wow. from Texas. Um, and yeah, we just sold our, our house in Texas, uh, a week or so ago and we are in it for the long haul. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here. Well, congrats. Yay. Thanks. Just in time for everything to go remote. That's what happened to me. <laughs> like, so I, I moved, I moved from Reseda to Burbank because I was like, I'm getting more jobs and they're all in Burbank. I'll finally move. That way I don't have to uh, like, you know, because honestly, Reseda's not that far, but the traffic, you're in there for an hour. Mm. And so I was like, I'll just move to Burbank finally. So that way I can actually get home at a decent time. And I like, I literally moved like March 3rd. And then a few weeks after that, it was like, everything's shutting down. No. So glad I'm not the only one. And <gasps> there are a few other people who just, the, the industry sort of paused mm -hmm. just long enough, I think, for several of my friends from Dallas, um, moved out here too it was just like oh i guess if i'm gonna do it remotely i might as well be set up for when things open up again mm -hmm. um so we're we're here and we're we're poised i love for it such a time as that will happen but um i have to say i was really nervous not knowing how things were gonna go just because i was just meeting people and feeling like i was getting my feet under me but this community is so solid, you guys, and so welcoming that I have, 
I don't know. It, it's I've just felt so supported and so like connected, mm -hmm. even though we're all isolated right now. Yeah. So yeah. That is my little. Well, I think that's like the scariest fest. thing about moving to LA is being like, oh my gosh, I don't know anybody there, and it's such a big city. Yeah. Um. Again, I I was really really lucky that I had um for several years um, just a really good friend out here who let me come and stay with him and his wife and just introduced me to everybody and mm -hmm. then I have some Texas friends and so like I don't know it just it it all worked out to not be as scary as it could have been and, that's good um, yeah yeah it's, it's been it's really such a great. it's such a generous community mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing so um. <laughs> Oh, I was going to ask actually about something that's not Genshin Impact related just because you voiced one of my favorite characters in uh um <laughs> yeah. in My Hero Academia. There I was going through the Rolodex. I was like, which one? Which, mm -hmm. which one's it going to be? Um, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you like I her. I love her. And like, don't get me wrong, I I like as a voice actor that also does dubbing, it's always really nice when you're like, I don't have any lip flaps to pay attention to. Yes. Oh my yeah. god! But but at the same time, your character literally has nothing to go off of because you're invisible. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's amazing. So true, and it's the weirdest thing about her um, is that she is probably my most physically active recurring character. Even though there's nothing physically on the screen for you to see. And I wanted to bring that up because, like, I think that, like, you know, we, as, as in the dubbing, what happens is, you know, we watch the Japanese first, guys. This is how you make a dub. We watch the Japanese <laughs> first. We look at the lip flaps. We kind of hear what they're doing and see what they're doing with their face and their body and try to emulate that when we go through it again. And then we do it in English when they like they take out the Japanese and when we re we when we record. And so with your character, it's like you literally only get the voice. That's it. Yes. And it's like, um, okay, cool. I don't have to match flaps really that badly. Like you have to match timing, but that's a little bit easier. But you have nothing to go off of. So it's like, wait. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it is so true and it's part of why I am um, uh, when I talk to people who want to get into dubbing or into acting in general, I talk so much about trusting well. your director. For the Chi Chi, for um, Chi Chi, Fun told us she's super popular in my in little moment, Genshin circle. But you will, there and her will amazing come a voice is a big part of why. So her VA of. should get mm -hmm. to have All her too. All you can hear is a voice that is speaking a language that you are not fluent in. Yep. And you get the general tone. Um, but then I have to turn. I'm I'm most often directed by uh, Colleen Clinkenbeard. And I will just turn to her and be like, was that a, was that like an ironic joke? Like the tone doesn't really fit here. Right. So what's happening? And really just have to rely on her. And she, uh, she'll have to rein me back in sometimes because uh, if I don't have those boundaries mm -hmm. of um, facial expression or even an eyebrow quirk or something, I just want to take it to the 10 mm -hmm. and just be like and this is this would be really funny and she's like oh my god can you just that's that's me that's too <laughs> <laughs> it's always but it's always tone it down nobody else is at your at your level tone it down <laughs> <laughs> or for me especially with that she's like i love it but you're you're stepping on like three other people's lines now <laughs> You gotta tighten that up. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a they're asking really quick uh, if the Felicia in here is the same Felicia that was on the Guild, which is the WoW parody. And no, that is Felicia Day. Yes. <laughs> uh, which is uh, another fellow uh, lovely nerd um, and yeah, she's all awesome. around cool geek. Um, if you do want to hear me do geeky stuff, there is a uh, podcast that's available on Stitcher and also on YouTube called The Dungeon Booth. And I was part of season one playing Limerick the Half Elf Bard. And um, okay, that's cool. Uh, at some point this year, we did one of my favorite things I've ever done in my life was we did a live version Ooh. of this podcast. And um, our sound guy, Aaron, is just incredible. And he had, like, specific music that he wrote for, like, Limerick spells. Wow. And specific, like, arrow sounds. And, is Limerick um, a bard? She is. She is. Um, nice. She's a lore bard, but she does because I, um, her entire shtick is that she, uh, her parents uh, passed away when she and her uh, sister gimmick 
uh, who are <laughs> Limerick and Gimmick. <laughs> Limerick and Gimmick. Um, when they were both very young, but her uh, her parents. Uh, one was a human, one was an elf, and they both were kind of hippies and like really into human culture. So they got these oh, cool. like human names. But mm -hmm. her uh, her elven grandmother, who ended up raising them, hated those names, and so she told her that a limerick was a human uh, power word. Oh. It essentially is. So all of her spells are in limerick form. Oh, that's, that's cool. really cool. I love and D and D. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And they really, uh, Christopher Waycamp, who is uh, Eraserhead mm -hmm. in uh, in My Hero, is our DM. And he, I, I, ca I come in every time just going like, okay, you have to tell me where the boundary is. And he's like, there is none. The limit does not exist. So like, I'm showing up with like elf wow. ears and I've got all my spells written down on note cards. I brought my flute to the live game because oh I had God. made a song for her and we never got around to it. So it's just... Chekhov's flute there the whole time. <laughs> um, but I love it, and um, right, I got weirdly good at writing limit limericks. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I will do that sometimes. So, that's on the so and where can people find this? Uh, Stitcher, and also on YouTube, and I believe uh, iTunes, and also on the Dungeon Booth website. And and uh, what was the name of the show so that people can find it again? Yeah. The Dungeon Booth. The Dungeon Booth. Yes, and every season, so season one is me, Kyle Phillips, and Jill Harris. Mm -hmm. um, and then every season has a new rotating cast. Um, Thank so you, season two had Mallory Roda and wow. Tia Ballard, who's my bestie, and other people, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> are in there too i know this last one had monica rial and alejandro saab um Ooh. i love them all like oh it's all yeah all hundreds in here bunch oh, oh Ali. friend i love him oh, yeah my he said alejandro he, cried he, he said he said he was gonna he said he was gonna see six gone you so just make sure you tell him to do that when you see him next. yeah <laughs> you you have to but you have to you have to tell him drop a hundred dollars yeah, you gotta tell him to drop you, 100 bucks. You specifically bucks, have to be like, yo, Alejandro, you need to drop $100 in this game right now. Because otherwise, yeah. he'll do it to you. So if you don't if you don't say it first, he'll do it to you. That's what he'll say to you. Yeah, you gotta I'm do it. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I'm <gonna> text him. <laughs> yes! You dropping $100 on, yes. Ganyu, or... on Ganyu right now? Do it. <laughs> do it. What you scared of? <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah, text him and uh, let me know what he says. Um. Tell him, tell him, Chris said you were supposed to be at C6 by now. <laughs> Felicia, um, when, you're, when you're done texting Alejandro, because that's super important. Um, I was wondering, you know, besides Mona, like who, who, um, who are other some of your favorite characters? They don't necessarily have to be playable in in Genshin. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I am obsessed with Sucrose. I love her <laughs> yes. so much. Um, Dude, so good. I love everything about her. Um, really digging Ganyu. Um, my husband has become very invested in the way that Paimon talks to Venti. Yes! Um, he, <laughs> Just he likes, he likes the insult? Yeah, he, uh, he I, I think he doesn't, he doesn't appreciate friends talking to friends that way. So every time Paimon is just like, you're useless, he's like, Paimon, the things we dislike in others are the things we most dislike about ourselves. <laughs> I like that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's really funny. <laughs> so good. Oh, Jen is oh, man. streaming right now? That's cool. Yeah, the Jen is doing uh, theory crafting with Corey right now. That's true. Um, Felicia. Yeah. You know you got to give us a Mona line or two mm -hmm. here. I mean, you got to you got to do it. It's been asked. It's just it's just got to happen. Oh, uh, well, I have seen I have seen a request for a memeable, so I will do that. Hmm. In terms of Mora, we have no more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's so good. 
Uh, I love it. And then, uh, and what's your favorite line of the game? If you had to pick one. Gosh, I'm so bad at this. I'm like, it's suddenly just a wall of text in my head. It's like, and then you said this, and then you said that. Um, I could find one too, if you don't have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pull one up for me, because I'm... I keep being startled by my own divination. <laughs> um, I wait, I so wait, how are... Smith every time. Divination, Mr. Paul. Uh, <laughs> is that your inspiration for that line? Because I love it. It, <laughs> it was not at the time, but every time I'm he I hear it, I'm just like, that's... Divination. Mm, yeah. Divination. Um, Let's see here. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Um, so when you play as Mona and you're and like uh you just sit there for a little bit, um her idol animation is her checking her pockets for money for Mora yes. and she can't find any, <laughs> and she's just like oh. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh, the other one that uh. I sent you one in uh, direct message in Discord. Oh yeah yeah. You you the other one that what? Um. My Graham really likes um, the scry the sky mm. um, or let me scry. And so we'll start chanting like it's an 80s movie. <laughs> like, you know what? Let the girl scry. I say, <laughs> let her scry. And that's yes, the whole yes. thing we do now. <laughs> that's so good. That's amazing. It's adorable. Oh, yeah. This travel companion of yours, do you know anything of her origin? No matter what, I cannot seem to discern a single shred of information regarding this floating fairy space. <laughs> oh, so you don't know where she comes from either. I'm so glad you it. chose my favorite line of Mona's. <laughs> um, I love it. And I also love your introductionary line where you're like, ah, you know, my name's Mona Majestus. And like, I don't know, I just think it's adorable. <laughs> um, Alejandro says, yes, he dropped $100 and no, he C6. <laughs> uh, tell him tell him that's not what I heard. Oh. Getting called out. <laughs> Getting called out. Tell him C6 or quit, dude. Hey, so uh cuz you're doing the treasure thingy, so are you which color Sealy are you going to get? Oh, I don't yeah, know. We gotta... might be talking about two different things cuz I'm just I, oh. I haven't seen the Sealies. Oh, there's Maybe a. We're not doing the treasure hunting. Thing. There's Is there's there... a there's a treasure event going on right now. Uh, where oh. you get where like you a have to... little pet sealy that follows you all the time. If you continue, if you like yeah. complete it to like treasure number fourteen, I think you can yeah. then buy one. And there's a there's a blue one, a pink one, and a and a yellow one or a gold one, as some people call it. Um, uh. So and they're really cute. I was so bad. Yeah. Yeah, but you better get on it. It's a yeah. limited event, dude. It's a limited event. It's gonna. It, you have three days to complete it. Somebody said in my chat. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, gotta work on that. It will. We we both have the day off tomorrow, so we'll. There you go. Do it then. Do it. <laughs> Is that what you have? Is that what's following you? I'm looking at the. Oh, did you get yours already, Core? Uh, I have not gotten mine yet, but I'm go I'm probably gonna get it today. I think. I oh did. yes, yes. Yeah. So she's watching me. Yeah, the yeah. thing following me is a little blue one. That that that's the thing that you need to use for the event. See this gold circle on my mini map? It's like there are gonna be these little beams of light that I have to dig up treasure in. But I haven't seen any of them in this one. This one's 